are going to start learning something brand new today. Um, and just like with the electron configuration that we did last week, when you first look at it, it looks like it's complicated, it looks like it's tough, but I guarantee you it's not. It's super easy. There's just some sort of guidelines and some rules that we have to follow as we work through these. Um, but I think you'll see that you'll have the same success with doing these that you did with doing the electron configuration. Um, it's, it's pretty simple. So um, just stay with me. Um, keep paying attention. Email me if you have any questions. Work through the samples that I'm going to give you at the end of the lesson. And then we're going to work on these in class just like we did with the electron configurations last week. Um, so just be patient. Know that um, it is pretty easy. There are just some things that you have to kind of pay close attention to. So as we start looking at how to balance equations, I first want to um, look at the basics of what a molecule looks like and what these numbers look like. So if you remember, um, when we talk about um, the symbols, so like the H there means that that is hydrogen. The C here stands for carbon. Uh, the Na here stands for sodium. So those are the, um, those are just the element symbols from the periodic table that are showing us which um, elements there are atoms of in the molecule. One that I want you to be really, really careful with as you balance these equations is um, chlorine. So this is one element right there, that is Cl. And the way that it happens to be written with the lowercase l, sometimes people will see that as a capital I and think it's a separate element, or they will see it as a one. But as we see as you go through today's lessons, you don't put um, any numbers after the molecules or after the element names. So be real careful when you see this right here, that is chlorine, the element chlorine. So be real careful of that. All right, so now that we know that the letters represent the elements that are in the molecule, the little numbers that are kind of dropped down and to the right, those are called the subscripts. So the little numbers that are dropped down to the right are called the subscripts. Those tell me how many atoms of that element are in the molecule. So right here we have hydrogen, and that hydrogen is made up of two atoms of hydrogen. So when we look here, we see that this molecule is made up of hydrogen, and chlorine. There is only one atom of hydrogen and one atom of chlorine. So if there's no number down there, we just assume it to be one because it's the one that is there. We only begin putting numbers when there are two or more. So for example, down here, when we look at CO3, we know that there is one atom of carbon and three atoms of oxygen. So now let's look at the larger number that is in the front. That number is called the coefficient, the coefficient. And that tells us how many molecules there are all together. So this is telling me that there are two molecules of HCl. This tells me that there are three molecules of CO3. So when we begin to add up the number of atoms that there are in the element, that becomes very important. So here, there are how many atoms of hydrogen? There are two atoms of hydrogen. So when we look here, if we put a four in front of that, that is the same as saying that we have four O2 molecules. So if we were to write that out, it would be O2, whoops, O2, 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 O2. So four O2 means we have four oxygen molecules. So then how many atoms of oxygen would there be if we have two plus two plus two, plus two. There are eight oxygen atoms. So 4O2 would be eight oxygen 
atoms. All right, moving on then, let's look at a couple of these others. So here, there are how many atoms of hydrogen? Two. And how many atoms of chlorine? Two. Because remember, two HCl would be like having HCl and HCl. It'd be like having two of those molecules. So there would be a total of two hydrogen and two chlorine atoms. Let's look at this next one. So let's look at CH4. There are how many atoms of carbon? One. And there are how many atoms of hydrogen? Four. So again, there's one atom of carbon right here, and there are four atoms of hydrogen there. Looking at this example, there are how many atoms of carbon? Three. And there are how many atoms of oxygen? Nine. There are nine atoms of oxygen here. Because remember, three, there are three of these molecules. That's what the big three, the coefficient, stands for. So that would be the same as saying you have CO3, C. O3, CO3. So we would have a total of three carbon, but we would have nine oxygen atoms. Okay, so we know that the letters represent the elements that are in the um, molecule. We know that the little number to the right, the um, subscript, tells us how many atoms there are of that element. And then the big number in front tells us how many molecules we have. So let's look and begin to see how to balance an equation. If you remember, way back when we talked about the conservation of matter, the conservation of mass, we said that um, matter cannot be created or destroyed. It can only change from one form to another. So when we balance these equations, basically what we're saying is that whatever goes into this side of the equation, a reaction will happen, something different comes out on the other side. However, everything that went into it has to be over here as well in the same number. So we can't lose anything. Um, we can't lose matter as it transfers from one form to the other. So all balancing an equation is, is looking at an equation and then balancing to make sure that we have the correct numbers of atoms on either side. And here's how we're going to do that. You always start, um, or I have you start, by sort of drawing this little T that will separate the sides of um, the equation. Then what you do is list the elements that appear on either side of the element. And remember, this will come up later as we do some of these more complex ones. Always save carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen for last. So you got that? You always want to balance carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen last. So let's start by listing the elements that we have on either side. I have a phosphorus and I have oxygen. Right now, I'm not concerned with how many. I just want to list the elements that there are there. I have a phosphorus and an oxygen on this side. So down here, this is just sort of our workspace. This is what is helping us keep track of how many atoms we have as we work through the problem. So all I'm doing right now is just listing how many atoms there are. So as of right now, there is one atom of phosphorus and there are how many atoms of oxygen? Two. On the right-hand side, we have how many atoms of phosphorus? four, and how many atoms of oxygen? 10. So we have to balance this equation um, because uh, since we can't create matter, we can't get um, you know, 10 oxygen when we only started with two. 
So we have to balance this equation. So we start from the top of our list and work down. So we're gonna start with the phosphorus. If I have one on the left-hand side and four on the right-hand side, what I have to do then, and I can only change the coefficients when I'm balancing an equation. I can only change that big number in front. I can't change, um, I can't put little numbers down here. I can't change the subscript. And I can't go in and put in numbers in between of an element. I can't separate the, um, the P and the O over here in the product. All right. Um, oh, and that um, brings me to another thing I guess I should mention. What you have on the right-hand side of the equation is called the product. It's what you end up with. What you have on the left-hand side are the reactants. So these are the things that react in order to have a chemical reaction. We usually say yields when we look at that sign to make a product. So the reactants, the chemical reaction, and create a product. All right, so back to this. So for phosphorus, I have one on the left, I have four on the right. So what I have to do is go in and change the coefficient. So now I have to say, okay, there are four phosphorus on this side in order to balance it. As you put that number there, every time you put a number in, you want to change this number. Sorry about that. You want to change this number to represent how many you now have on that side. I no longer have one. I have four. So now my phosphorus are balanced. I see that I have 10 oxygens on this side, but only two oxygens on this side. So this is where um, your math kind of comes into play. In order to get 10 oxygens on the left-hand side, what will I have to place in front of the O? If I put a 10 there, that's actually going to make 20 atoms of oxygen because in each molecule there's two. So if I had 10 molecules, that would make 20 atoms. So I'm going to put a five in front of that oxygen, which then changes my total number of oxygen to 10. So can you see that I now have four atoms of phosphorus, four atoms of phosphorus? They are balanced. I have five molecules, and in each molecule there are two atoms, so that's a total of 10 atoms of oxygen on that side, and a total of 10 atoms of oxygen on that side. So when these numbers down here are the same, we know that we are balanced. All right, let's look at another one. So the first thing you do is to draw your T. I always draw this line where the arrow is so that in my brain separates the sides. We're going to list our elements. I have magnesium and I have oxygen. Remember, we always save carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen to last. Should be the same on both sides because of the law of conservation of matter. I have how many magnesium on the left? One. How many oxygen on the left? Two. On the right-hand side, I have one magnesium and one oxygen. So as we look at this, we can see to start, our magnesium is balanced. I have one on each side. My oxygen's not. Remember, I can only add in front of the, um, the molecule. So in order to make there be two, oxygen atoms, I'm going to put a two here. But look what happens. As I redo my totals down here, I now have two magnesium atoms and two oxygen atoms, which is what I was going for. I wanted two oxygen, but notice that that changed my number of magnesium atoms. So if I go back to the left-hand side and put a two here, that changes that to two and now my equation is balanced. You can see that I have two magnesium, two magnesium, two oxygen, two oxygen. On this side, I have mercury and oxygen. 
On this side, I have mercury, whoops, and oxygen. I have one mercury, one oxygen. I have one mercury and two oxygen. So this is very simple, similar to that last one that we did in which the mercury, the first one is balanced, but the oxygen is not. So I now need to place a two over here, which gives me the two oxygen that I want, but it also changes my mercury to two, which is a simple fix because if I come to the right hand side, put a two there, make that two, my equation is balanced. Let's list our elements, aluminum and oxygen, aluminum and oxygen. I have two aluminum, three oxygen. I have one aluminum and two oxygen. We start at the top. I have two aluminum on the left and only one aluminum on the right hand side. So I have to put a two in front of this in order to make this be two aluminum. And now I have um, three oxygen on the left and two oxygen on the right. Again, this is where we have to do a little bit of math because I, I can't make two become a three or three become a two. So I have to think about that smallest number that both three and two will go into, which is what? It is six. So I'm gonna have to try and make um, there be six on each side. So in order to do that, in order to get six oxygen on um, this side, I'm going to have to put a two. Whoops. I have to put a two here in order to make there be six oxygen. So because the, the two times the three is six, so that gives me my six oxygen I want. However, that now changes my number of aluminum to be four. So let's go back over to the right-hand side and fix that. Since we started working with the oxygen there, let's finish that out. I'm gonna put my three, which gives me my six oxygen, but notice that doesn't affect the aluminum at all. But now my aluminum number is off. I have four and two. So what we're going to do then is now make this be four. and now it is balanced. So sometimes you might have to go back and change a number as you work through in order to, um, in order to make them balanced. So let's double check and look and see. We have four aluminum, four aluminum. We have six oxygen, six oxygen. So that one is balanced. All right, just a couple more. We have BA, CL. Now here's where I'm not gonna put them in order because I always want you to do carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen last. So let's put in the S and then the hydrogen and the oxygen. So the same for over here. And I try to, even though they appear in a different order over here, I like to list the order the same down here just so I can keep that table straight. So we have Ba, barium, Cl, chlorine, sulfur, hydrogen, and oxygen. Let's begin to tally up. On the left-hand side, there are how many barium? One. How many chlorine? Two. How many sulfur? One. How many hydrogen? Two. And how many oxygen? Four. Let's go to the right-hand side. I have one barium, one chlorine, one sulfur, one hydrogen, and four oxygen. 
All right, so let's start at the top and work our way down. Barium is fine, one on each side. Chlorine is not fine. I have two on this side and only one on this side. So what we will do then is come to the right-hand side and we will put a two in front. Remember, I can't put a little number down, so I can only change the number of molecules that I have. Um, so I put a two in front and that's gonna make a couple changes. That changes my hydrogen to be two and it changes my chlorine to be two, which actually does exactly what I want it to do. Because if we look, we now have one barium on each side. We now have two chlorine on each side. We have one sulfur on each side, two hydrogen, and four oxygen. So a problem that may have looked really, really difficult when you first looked at it, because we put these in order and because we do this table, becomes very, very easy. Simple solution. I do wanna do one more because there's one thing that I need you to um, be aware of and look out for. So let's do the table. This one only has carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. So we will list those in that order carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. Remember, if there was anything else there, we would put these last. So we only have carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. Let's tally these up. And remember that when we're tallying, we're looking at the entire side. So we're looking at this as this side, the reactant side, and balancing that with the product side. So as I begin to look at these, how many carbon are there? Six. How many hydrogen are there? 12. And then be very careful. How many oxygen atoms are there on this side of the equation? There are eight. Why are there eight? Because there are six oxygen atoms here plus the two oxygen atoms there. So there are eight on that side. On the right-hand side, there is one carbon, there are two hydrogen, and there are how many oxygen? Three. Again, why are there three? Because there's one oxygen here and two oxygen here. All right, let's begin to balance this equation. So we're gonna start at the top and work our way down. There are six carbons on the left-hand side. There's only one on the other side. So let's put our six in front here. We see that that changes our carbon number to six. And that gives us how many oxygen? Uh, 12, 13. Ooh, these numbers are becoming weird, aren't they? Do you see why there's 13? Because there's 12 oxygen here plus the one oxygen there. So there are 13. We'll worry about oxygen in a moment. Let's come back to our hydrogen. There are 12 hydrogen on the left. There's only two on the right. So how can I make these two hydrogen become 12? I place a six here, which is going to give me my 12 hydrogen, because again, six and there's two in each one. And then now my number of oxygens become six oxygens plus 12 oxygens become 18. So now I have 18 oxygen on this side. So now I have to come back on my left-hand side and figure out how I'm going to get 18 oxygen over there. So my first thought is if I can help it, I do not want to put a number in front of this because that's going to change my number of carbon and my number of hydrogen and then I have to go back and forth. So if I look at this right now and see that there are six oxygen atoms that I really don't want to mess with, I need how many more to get to 18? I need 12 more. Is there something pretty simple that I can do to this to make this be those 12 oxygen? The answer is yes. What number can I put in front of O2 to give me 12 oxygen atoms? 
and that is six. So when I place a six there, I now have six oxygen plus 12 oxygen, which gives me the 18 that I need in order to be balanced. So if we do our check on our chart, we see we have six carbon, 12 hydrogen, 18 oxygen. So those are the basics for balancing equations. I cannot stress how important enough it is that you draw this table to keep track, that every time you place a number, you go through and change how that has affected the numbers of everything on that side. Always put carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen last. Do all your other numbers first. And I think you'll see that you'll get the hang of it um, pretty easily. And we're gonna work through some of these while you're with me and you have some to work on at home um, on your days that you are remote learning. As you're working through these today, um, email me if you have a question. I'll get back to you as soon as I can. What I have done is I have placed um, some slides in Pear Deck, like I did last week with the electron configuration. Um, and you can just work through and write on those. I can go in and kind of look at those and check on you during the day. Next week, we will get whiteboard up and running again, and I will watch you work through them while you're with me in class. So I think I put five of these problems in um, Pear Deck, I think, maybe seven. I don't know. You'll find out when you get there. Um, but yeah, so the next assignment then in your module for today is a link by class to go to Pear Deck and just work on some of these. Um, again, don't stress over it. It takes a little bit to catch on, but once you do, it's really easy, just like the electron configurations from last week. Um, so get in there, fiddle with them. Don't stress. Come with questions this week, and um, I'll see you soon.